proc an item because with all of your attacks from strafe, you're going to be proccing that lightning like crazy. That's true. That's a, that's that's another carry item that I I actually talked about that too. I think that's a good item too for him. Yeah, and Hellraiser's last pick is another support. It's another global support or global hero. I should say ancient apparition. That's uh, that yeah. really certainly fits into this line. I honestly, I played this line with my brother yesterday, kind of with the ancient apparition specter, and I think an earthshake was in there as well. So like, there, there's this global presence that it's just so difficult to deal with, and and because you have a specter, you can get involved in fights and you can take farm just by using haunt. And you can also farm pretty effectively across the map. But the problem with this is that they can shut him. Early. However, I'm not sure. If like them, that early game. It depends on how they play it and where they, which I'm very excited to see here for Denial. A team that I have yet to watch, Hellraisers as well, and it's going to be a good series here as we're going to jump into the draft. This last pick Evoker, I'm kind of questioning it. What do you think about it? It's a risky pick. Yeah. Well, it's because there's not much hard CC on his team. Usually you see Invoker paired with heroes like Faceless Void, so they can get off their full combo and do a lot of damage during the Chronosphere. But in this game, they have the Alchemist stun and Batrider Lasso to Please set up for Centrix. So they do have Centrix to help them if they play aggressive early game. Though, assuming he goes Exhort. I, I think that's a pretty fair assumption at this point. How, how many Quaswexes have we seen in the past couple of you know weeks, especially with patch 6.2? That's the thing. So I, I imagine it'll be yeah. Quas Exhort, but I've been wrong before. So. Uh, we are going to jump into the game. It is going to be game number two. Well, series number two. Game number one, actually, the best of two series, or two-game series, as it's called. And we'll get into the introduction. So for Denial, you have Paris. Sakshika playing the Batrider, I believe. That's Sakshika. We'll have QSDF on the Invoker in the mid lane. Down bottom, we'll have Creo. He'll be playing the Skyrath Mage. Matt will be on the Alchemist. And we'll have Jorall will be on the Clinks. On the other side of things, for Hellraiser as well, Dread. He'll be on the Nature's matter. Prophet going in the off lane. It's going to be mid Yoki playing the Death Prophet. We'll have Art Style on the Spectre. Uh, Dubas will be on the Earthshaker. And Immune will be on the Ancient Apparition as well. So uh, just some defensive tri lines coming out right now. No real pressure coming out on the Spectre here. On the other side of things, it looks like we'll have Clinks getting free farm down in that bottom lane. But I think he should be roaming early on here just to try to get kills and be effective in this game. Uh, if you look at the support items are about, there's two smokes on denial, so they're definitely looking to play aggressive with their Alchemist Skyrath. They also have sentries, obs, and couriers, so their supports don't have much in the way of stat items, and mm -hmm. they didn't save up gold towards boots or anything, but they have smokes, so they're looking to get kills. For Hellraisers, they saved gold for sentries just in case they needed it on Ancient Apparition. Earthshaker also saved a little bit of gold, and they have a smoke as well as a chicken knobs. And it looks like they won't need to use the sentries or need to get the sentries. They haven't had any camps blocked, and it looks like that rider doesn't have a ward, so he's just going to be sitting here and trying to leech experience. If you're going to be trying to gank the Death Prophet in the mid lane, I feel like that's very difficult, when, especially when she gets her boots. Her move speed makes her incredibly difficult to take down, um, even with a Skyrath Mage and even with an Alchemist. So that's my one problem coming up from Denial right now. Whereas on the other side of things, Fisher is certainly good up against uh, the Invoker to get a kill here, and they can easily do so by just smoking up. So I think you, you're talking about early rotations from smokes. We'll have to wait and see who gets one done first. I don't think it's too hard to gank a Death Prophet before she gets too many levels. Before DP hits 6, it's pretty easy to go for a kill on him, as long as DP doesn't sense that it's coming and back off. Yes. So just positioning essentially going to be really important for Yoki here. Um, doing pretty well. Again, this is just going to be, I think, a hard farming game early on. Again, rotations coming up from supports are going to be very important, but I, I imagine we'll have to see Jeral get involved pretty early on here because he's this clinks, obviously. The Invoker with some stripes will be pretty nice to have, but some stacks up in the jungle could be huge for Paris up in this top lane on this Batrider. If he can get some Firefly going in that jungle, get to a really quick clink tagger, that could be a nice uh, boon for him. Whereas Art Style is just farming up now, seven last hits. Again, you want to be involved with Haunt, but you also probably want to get a, a Radiance here on our style as early as possible. Radiance is the most popular build, but if he does happen to get shut down, you can go for other options like Diffusal Blade on Spectre or just going Manta. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that we don't see enough of, I feel like. It's just like, 
Spectre's just saying, okay, well, listen, I'm probably not going to get a Radiance, but, well, hold that mid. thought. Oh, yeah, you're right, Yoki getting caught out. There's going to be the Unstable Concoction. Acid Sprays, well, they're getting four heroes here just to be involved in this kill, and they will get it with Paris. Drawing the first blood there. Fucking that, he's going to get caught out with the Acid Spray, but he should be okay. Or rather, the uh, Fish is done. Yeah, no. If that Rider wasn't there with Boots and a double damage rune, they wouldn't have gotten that kill. They Huge had up. to use the Cold Snap to mini stun once just to allow Alchemist to get into range, and Earthshaker knew that it was coming and was there with the Fisher. But the double damage from Bat getting two attacks and was able to finish off uh, Yoki on the Death Prophet. And that's, and that's huge too, it gives a little bit of experience going the way of the Invoker, gives him some gold as well. Obviously the first blood going the way of the Bat Rider. He's at already a thousand gold right now, so... And the question is whether he goes for his Tranquils and then grabs his Blink Dagger or if he gets his Blink first in this situation. I mean, he's going to have to go back home, though, it looks like, at the very least. Or he could get a bottle so he doesn't have to go back home. True. Or just have one of his supports give him some regen. <laughs> Alright, you, you, you're going to give me regen, you're just going to be... You're going to be my courier. Yeah, you don't need that. Your support. Yeah, you know, give me that farmer. clarity. <laughs> you don't need that at all. <laughs> That's true, so... He is going to sit in the jungle now. He's just going to keep farming right now, get some stacks going his way. Uh, Fury on a stupid back bottom. Dread probably was jungling for a bit. I'm not sure. It looks like he went home for a bit. 20 last hits going for Geraldo in this bottom lane, though. So he's having a heck of a time. Two points Searing Arrows, two points Skeleton Walk. No surprise there. He's got a Sage's Mask already. Looks like he'll be building into an Orchid, I imagine. Um, One thing with Clank Psycho's Orchid is he's going to hit his power in the mid game faster than the other carry. So he'll be able to go for solo kills onto the Spectre, while Spectre's saying they're trying to farm, because he'll have Orchid before the Radiance. Mm -hmm. It just costs less gold. Unless uh, Spectre gets fed at early game, which it doesn't look like it's happening, because they're both free farming the safe lane. Yeah, there's not really going to be that min that much action, I think, in the top lane for art style. And even if he gets on, I'm not sure how many kills he'll be involved in. We'll have to see. The Spectre's had a bit of a rough time here in 6.82. Even though the Spectre has been buffed, and obviously this type of playstyle benefits the Spectre, I just don't know if it's really been the best situation for a lot of these teams. However, if the game goes late enough, you're certainly going to now carry a Clinks, and we saw that in the game between, I believe, Navi US and Shadows of the Past, where Infinity played a heck of a Clinks game, but then just got shut down once Snaking got, you know, four, five, six slotted, so it's very difficult to deal with, I think. I mean, if you get in the farm, if this game goes late enough, it's just too ridiculous. Spectre in the late game is a very, very strong hero. Ever just had is under pretty strong mid game, like Death Prophet, Earthshaker A, Imperium can carry Spectre through the mid game. He, as long as he's haunting. Um, then they have really good late game because Furion is just good at you know all stages of the game, and Spectre no. just gets better and better. While DP falls off a little bit towards the end, but. Is still a strong hero on a force of that ultimate. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, unstable concoction. Dubas is just running around getting concussive shouted now. Unstable is going to fly. It's going to connect the Sun Strike as well. Dubas going to get blown up. Boom. Invoker getting it done. Creo trying to keep out. Will make it away. Dread getting it up to Searing Arrows, but he's okay. Skeleton Walk from Draw, level 2 with that, so he should be fine. He has a salve as well. And he's actually going to go for the Soul Ring first, it looks like. And uh, they will grab that. It means that he will have some extra mana regen going his way. He'll be able to Death Pact as well. And good fight for Denial already early on in this game. Yeah, and Dubas sends out the gang coming in onto Furion. And he was in a good position, but he got caught by the Denial support and just brought down. You know, there's a huge stack already at the hard camp over here for Hellraisers. Wow, that's... Yeah, that's going to be some gold going their way. Um, They're probably going to give it to DP, to accelerate DP's farm. Yes. Uh, to get their drums up and to get the Yules up. And to also get to level 11 fast, because the rank 1 ult is kind of eh. It's not good. No, the rank 2 ult is pretty strong. Rank 3 is really, really strong. That's when you hit your peak, is when you get that level 16 for the Death Prophet. I mean, and a couple more items on top of that, like a Bloodstone or Heart, Yules, obviously, like you talked about. It just feels like at that point, if you can get to your level 3 ultimate, especially if you're doing well, it's going to be kind of a rough time for Denial, so... Batrider is about to have his Blink and level wow. 6. That's He's going to have to Fountain, it looks like. Uh, yeah, there's no Bottle and Invoker to give him a charge. So he's going to have to Fountain before he farms the stack. But once he farms it, he will have his Blink in level 7, or level 6, rather. He actually has uh, Firefly ready to go. He won't be able to stick an Apom, but still might be able to take it down. He can do it once, yeah. maybe. 
and that could be enough for him to get to that blank dagger, which is 2250 now. They, of course, changed the gold cost, and it uh, looks like this should be enough for it. And then he'll be able to go home, maybe purchase up a smoke and go for a gank here, and that would be very important for Denial to get involved early on in this game. With, I mean, like, a, an 8-minute blank dagger is pretty damn good timing, especially in this patch for Batrider. They did abandon yeah. the top lane, so your Spectre is getting crew farm, but that's still good, you know, overall. It's too hard for him to contest top lane because Spectre can just chase him with a dagger. Yes. One of the few heroes that can shut down an off lane Batrider completely, or carry heroes, outside of, like, the triple stun lanes. Yep, and that's the thing too. I, that's actually a very really good point. I don't think of Spectre as somebody that can get kills in the lane, but in that situation, absolutely. There's a Midas now done at 7 minutes and 50 seconds, so Klinks actually went for a Sol Ring first, his Boots first as well, and then gets a pretty decently timed Midas, all things considered. So, Denial are starting to get some big items coming out for their heroes. Again, you are giving free farm to Art Style, and he is going for Phase Drum, but uh, you're still doing pretty well on your own. Right, and it looks like actually the Invoker are not going for a Midas of his own. And uh, QSDF is just sitting there and just CSing essentially and getting plenty of farm and doing so. And Paris is behind him. He's smoked Dyer's up. He's ready to go for a blink lasso, but they are not going to find DP. Yoki is going to be using his crystal, like you mentioned, just to get this stack. Well, that's happening. Bottom lane is getting pressured as well. Dubas is trying to hold bottom lane, but there's not much you can do. On this next wave, with Searing Arrows, they're probably going to take the tower down. Doesn't have strafe, but he doesn't need it in this situation. There's no real point. Um, they don't have any other heroes rotating. DP needs to go to the fountain to get mana. And it's actually going to be Dread with his ultimate taking some of the stack. DP's probably going to have to come back to finish it off, though. Dread only has one Null Talisman for those of you playing at home. Not quite the Null Talisman game we've been seeing recently, which, by the way, is just, I think, the best build ever. It's awesome. It's fun. Maybe, maybe to watch. Yeah, exactly. I don't know about to play against or <laughs> to, to play, play with. as. Yeah, it's it's not the best, but I think it's it's great to watch. It looks like he will be going for Midas, though. He already has close of haste, and he's not buying all the strength to finish up Tread, so that's going to be his choice. Jural actually TPs into the mid lane. Looks like they're going to go for a kill here, maybe on the Death Prophet. I don't know if they can get this kill. They have Cold Snap. They're going to use it. Yoki getting brought low, and there's going to be the Searing Arrows as well. The Haunt, Sunstrike going to fly. Boom, they get the kill. Nicely done. And Booker takes down Yoki. His Sunstrikes have been on point, and they get a kill on the Death Prophet. Ooh, Haunt coming through. Nicely done. Before he went, or reported with the Haunt, uh, he got the Chilling Touch by the Ancient Apparition. Meanwhile, while he's gone, A is getting some soul experience top, and he's about to crack level 6. That's huge. Getting the Ice Blast, getting involved with the Global. Getting oh. nice and early, much unlike Fluff last game. He couldn't. No. It's not going to be like that. Top, oh, though. immune. Nice TP coming in from Paris. He blinks in last as they get the kill, and so much for that. So much for your level 6, my friend. Oh, God. Good kill for Denial, though. They That was their first blink lasso. Art style, searing arrows, doing some work, but the Sunstrike didn't connect really, so he actually just TPs away. Nicely done. They're pressuring that. He actually has to go home because of that too, so Art style, Art style can't sit and farm. He just has to back up. Um, he will have Haunt up in 60 seconds, and, and I think this is also really important, is that they get involved with Haunt early on rather than just standing back in CS in the entire game. But if you have a sure kill with Haunt, it's really important, I think, that you, you get it done. So. Yep. Uh, Dubis, while he was sitting bottom for a long time, he was able to catch up in experience. He's almost level 5. Uh, almost level 6 coming up on Mad. Meanwhile, the Scarf is also halfway to level 6, and the AA just cracked level 6. So, uh, the experience wise, in terms of the supports, it's pretty close, other than that Earthshaker currently. Denial is yep. leading because of that. They have a 2000 experience lead coming right out, so. They're tower also hit for the one and they're getting this bottom tower. Tower has fallen. But this they'll... is what we expected. Early pressure coming yeah. out from Denial. And I'm sure they'll do fine up until the mid game. But then all of a sudden you have a level 2 ultimate coming out from Yoki. Necro Book rank 1 already picked up on Invoker. He's having a heck of a time. Again, he didn't have to go for Midas though, and that's the thing. He's gonna end up being a little bit under level because of Joe Midas. Mm -hmm. You pick up Midas on Invoker, especially because it's just for the levels primarily. Yes. But he will have his Necro Book 3 a little bit faster. He stays having a good start and he keeps getting hero kills. I think that's really good too because if you're trying to put this early game aggression on, it's better that you have the Necro 3 early to take down towers and to take fights and to kind of snowball, which you don't see as much, but still. Plausible. I don't know. Haunt's gonna go through. Not sure who they're chasing after. Lasso, maybe. 
Well, the Yoki's gonna get caught out. He's gonna get sun striked as well, and that's gonna be Invoker involved in yet another kill. He's actually on a killing spree. Nicely done. Life of a support. Creo instantly when he saw that haunt Dyer's TP's home. He doesn't want to get gone on by Spectre again and kill because he's defenseless against the Spectre. He's just like, nope, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> yep. That's without a ratings too. He's just afraid, man. I don't blame him. Well, when you're a zero armor hero, it's it's a hard. You just life. die. Yeah. Well, smart play. He gets out of there. He gets home, and Dyer's now they're gonna put pressure on the mid tower. You have the tier one going and getting low from Jeral using Searing Arrows. He has level one strafe, but he actually maxed out his skeleton walk first, which I like. Meanwhile, Sun Strike TP cancel. Smart play. Unstable getting charged, but he's gonna stun himself. Although he does have chemical rage, so no big deal there. Fisher blocking the tier one tower, but it is gonna go down. It's just Rat actually doing some damage here. Yep, but wow. Yeah, forcing that TP cancel made it so that Hellraiser couldn't defend the tower. They're gonna shoot a ancient apparitional to try to pick someone off. Good thing for Troll who's selling up though. Look at those timings. The two of the uh, top three timings they were from American players, Smash and of course Rebor is the lovely mid player himself, the lovely invoker player. What a player he is. Art style. Cold snaps, he's just gonna get out. Sun strike! It will connect, but they don't have the damage to push him all off. So he'll get out alive, but still nicely done. QSDF has hit almost every single one of his sun strikes this game. Really impressive. And been getting that extra damage armor to nomad, so he doesn't feel safe jungling for too long. Do we'll have to go back to base? No. Yeah, that, that that's also just again, he they're shutting him down from getting too much CS. He's got 82 assets, he is leading the way, but again, if you're if you're having to periodically go back home, it's really important. Meanwhile, Jarrell's chasing after Yoki, or just the, at least scouting things out. There's not sentry wards all over the map, there's no gem. Sunstrike oh, connects to Yoki. My god, this guy is just on point. He's just he's dropping just bombs on people. Down. Yeah, he really is. It's, it's like, like shoot arrow, hit arrow, shoot sunstrike, hit sunstrike. It's been impressive, actually. He's Definitely. just dropping the bombs, and Lane it's just been fine. The just saw the TP in from Batrider, who has blink and force at 14 minutes. Meanwhile, they're going to haunt. They're looking for maybe a kill. They dust up on Jeral. TP coming in. He does reality too there, but Jeral is going to get out just fine. It looks like he's juking them pretty effectively. And he does have a TP scroll if he needs to get away. So haunt used. Now it's on cooldown. He has to actually walk towards the top lane if he wants to be involved in a fight. And I'm not sure if you want to be at this point with no haunt. You have to deal with Lasso. You've got to deal with Unstable, Chemical Rage. This is going to be a tough engagement, I think, for Hellraisers if they take it. And... I don't think they can, which is why they're still pushing. They're putting pressure on mid with three heroes. They're putting pressure on bottom with their Furion. Furion's going to try and delay their push top. They also have the A ult shot up there. Dyer's the are 45. A ult is actually doing a lot of work against the Alchemist. He's not able to heal up with his ultimate. Yeah, they, they won't be able to, you know, take the fight, but they are kind of being annoying. And however, the tier one tower is going to fall. And now they're going to have everyone TP back mid. And this is a fight that really Hellraisers can't take. They're going to start off with Cold Snap on Art Style first. Meanwhile, Yoki can come through. He does have his ultimate, but Fisher will push them back for now. Nicely done. Exorcism is going to go for Yoki. Flamebird is going to push him away a bit. Um, and everyone started to rotate over for denial. With the exception of Draw, who has rotated down bottom. He's still trying to get to that second Oblivion Staff and get his Orca done, which he's kind of close to at this point. Radiance and the deny for QSDF in that mid lane, which denied. also, uh, at this point, he's going to have his Necro 3, which is going to fly out too. So, Very, very early Necro 3. Um, there needs to be a lot more pressure put on by Denial. They need to try and get a mechanism up, so after they get hit with the Fear and ult the AL, they can heal up and keep pushing instead of having to back off. Uh, getting the deny in the mid tower is definitely a big plus for them, and they were able to have Joel save the bottom tower from the split push that Hellraiser's put on. But they need to be able to get a mechanism up, that way they can take a tier 2 and either try to go high ground or take a uh, tier 2 in a different lane, or Roshan. Mm -hmm. Instead of having two heroes on their team be forced to the fountain because he got hit by AA and Fear Animals. And Matt's not building towards that uh, mech just yet. If, he should be the one. Meanwhile, oh, there is Art going style. to be yeah, Art Style looking to try to get out Paris in the top lane, going to town. Art Style getting low. They do get the kill on Paris. Nicely done. They zone him out. They get him out of there. They actually get two kills as well across the map. And that keeps Art Style alive. So nice play there. And it gives him a bit of gold as well. So mm, There was another sun strike that did hit. It's just not enough damage. How unfortunate. QSDF, I mean, like, that's just... 
I mean, it's great that he can hit these sun strikes, but it's just not if if it's not enough damage to get these kills, then it's really they're not accomplishing much. And you talked about getting a mech and pushing and keeping pressure on the map, and now they're starting to get room for Hellraisers here. So it's really again, I agree with you on the mech, but is it going to be mad building? It is the question. They might not want to push the aggression too far. Like they, although I see like. When I see an Invoker go for Book 3 early instead of Midas, I think that they want to just get all the Tier 1s and the Tier 2s instead of just get the Tier 1s and stop and farm up. Um, they oh could boy. be just waiting for other items like the... Ooh, two bus Fisher, and he avoids the Sunstrike, wow! Just that barely the living. that I saw miss. Yeah, I, I think I, I... No, actually, you know what? I think all of them have hit that I've seen as well, which has been really impressive, but... Which, by the way, uh, important to note that that's Funzy on the Invoker. Uh, something I should have said. It's just easier to say QSDF sometimes. <laughs> I just like that more. <laughs> but that is Funzy. So this is like three of the five MTW players from way back when, from when they won against uh, Navi at DreamHack. I think DreamHack Summer 2012? That was a while ago. That was a really good series. And I've always been a huge fan of MTW since then, but also... Uh, art style, the legend you have to respect in Dread as well. I mean, Yoki's a very solid player that's been coming up through the Russian scene recently. They're gonna exorcise him, they're gonna go for the tier 1 tower down bottom, and Yoki's going to work, and we'll take it. And that is level 2 ultimate, by the way. While that's all happening, they were pressuring top. An item just came out, I'm not sure what it was, but I thought it was pretty- Oh, it was the Orchid, I believe, for the Clinks. Yeah, that was it. And, uh, that's three silences. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, it should only been two. I'm not sure why the third one showed up there, but... He's just dead, man. That's just that's how you gotta say it. Hellraiser has been giving a little bit of space to this Earth Shaker, like letting him take lanes for a little bit. Uh, he did on bottom for a while to work towards his blink dagger and get higher level, so he'll be able to initiate and stun a lot of people. Uh, meanwhile, Jarl is now that he has Orchid, trying to hunt around a lot more than he was before. It was, he was already doing a little bit of that. Yeah. He doesn't want to go into the dire jungle where he knows the entire Hellraiser's team is, though. I mean, he'd still be safe, I think, unless they have a gem. I don't believe so. They have no sentries on the map currently for Hellraiser's, which I find kind of hard to believe. But 19 minutes in, the Spectre does have the Relic, so... Phase Drum, Relic, pretty good. Radiance would be better, obviously. And once you get that Radiance and you start farming away, that's when you're hitting your stride. I don't know if Denial put enough pressure on Art Cell to really stop him from being a factor. He's going to haunt, though. I'm not sure who he's looking for. He's actually just trying to scout out Draw probably more than anything. He doesn't reality into anybody, but... They also it's... had AA ult on cooldown while they used both of the two global to net. Ancient Impression is maybe dead here. Earn? Oh, the um, Forge Spirits! Come on! <laughs> he can't even catch a break. He thought he might live, and then he gets Forge Spirit to death. Good stun from Dubas, but it was not enough. Uh, we have, they threw out the Haunt as well as the Furion ultimate, but Ancient Apparition had 20 seconds on his ult cooldown when they did that. Because he had just shot one top at the Batrider, he saw farming a wave. So... Yuki's pressuring bottom, Dread TP's in. Going for the split push. Oh, uh, that's split push life. Oh, they're going to TP out though. Actually, a couple of heroes are being mid currently. Sunstrike back on Dubas, there's the Orchid. Sunstrike doesn't connect, but they get the kill anyways. Funzy gets the tower, Ice Blast coming through. I'll have to back away, but nicely done there. And they defend the tier 2 in that bottom lane. Great rotations for Denial. Dealing with the split push effectively and also still getting the tower at the same time. And important to note, Matt is very close to his mech. He actually just needs the recipe. Denial are doing a really good job of controlling the map this game. Furion against a Clinx that has Orchid has to be extremely careful. And Clinx right now is Our scouting style. style and focus there as well. Sunstrike, that actually is not going to connect, the cold snap just is stunning him in place, he can't move anywhere, and that's a huge pickup. And again, as close as our style was to that Radiance, it's still delayed, so maybe 23, 24 minutes before we see that. And uh, again, Jarrell getting involved early on here, he's playing a heck of a game with this Klinks, 4 and 2 now. But he's also got 3k gold, and now you wonder what his next item choice is here for the Klinks, what would you build in this situation? He's got a choice, he could get the Blink for Blinks. He could go for BKB, or he could go with another damage item if he doesn't really need to BKB. If he thinks his positioning is going to be strong enough and he can wait for Shaker Fissure before he goes in, then he could just skip BKB altogether and go for an MKB or Crit, or Scotty or something. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. I feel like in this game, 
He's caught out a couple of times by Fisher, but I think for the most part, I don't know if Blinks is maybe the be best idea, but it looks like he's going to go BKB. He picks up the Ochre Club, so he just wants to... The safe choice. Yeah, it's it's a smart decision, and I think this is the right decision also. I don't know if you really need that Blinks there. He can get it later also. Once he gets also. BKB, he's going to be extremely difficult to kill, especially if he has his old buff on. Yeah, that's the thing, is Death Pact, which is, by the way, a very short duration, but also a very short cooldown. You have to manage that very effectively. Yep. So, I don't know. That's really the tough part for me for Jarrell is, is making sure you don't take a fight when you have your death pack on cooldown. Or off cooldown, rather. Damage. Um, and Matt is getting his mech now. So this is the time, I think, uh, for Denial to start maybe pressuring a couple more towers. Not, like, too crazily, but taking them where you can get them haunt oh, again. Haunt just and, and that's, with, I think... With Haunt down, they're going to have... And Fear and Ultimate, they're going to have to go for a tier 2. These are just scouting haunts, man. Every single haunt Top, we've seen this yeah. game has been scout haunt, so I don't understand the decisions. Top lane's but... pushed out, mid lane is decently pushed out, plus there's no mid tier one anyway, so I think they might try to go for bottom tower, or try to go for top tower, and kills top. Tier 2 is available, they're actually looking for Dread, maybe Sprout, Geral, Lasso, maybe not the best play for Dread, Exorcism is gonna go, but there's the Yule Scepter, Flame Break, Firefly still going, Dread, Silence up now on him, he should fall, Ice Blast coming through the Fisher as well, Geral getting low, he will go down, but here's Funzie going to town, Sunstrike miss, they can't get the kill on Yoki, and he will actually get out alive, but with Exorcism down now, they can send the Necro 3 out of the tower, and even without Geral, they can take this, so, a 1 for 1 trade, and that does give a bit of money towards Hellraiser, but not nearly enough to really do that much. And Clinks could have actually man up and fought there. The DP isn't crazily farmed. Seven armor, and he was sitting on around 700, 800 HP. Mm -hmm. Clinks can, with uh, Yule's on cooldown, most importantly, he could have just attacked into him instead of running away and running directly into the Earthshaker Fisher. Yeah, that was it was kind of bad. See, Benny Hill like in that situation. He he. he died either way, but at least he could have, you know, done some damage and maybe got another kill for his team. Uh oh. And they actually missed the AI Ice Blast, but they still might get this kill on that, even though he does have chemical rage. Unstable concoction going, soon to stun up Dread here. Uh, Maelstrom is up for the Nature's Prophet, by the way. And in fact, I, I want to check the items real quick as well. BKB very close to being done for not only Geral, but for Paris as well. And he also has his Blink Force already, so uh, yeah, he Paris had is having Force a great game. 14 minutes, which was absolutely unreal. And straight flying out. Yeah. That, that, that is just. The fact that Paris had such a good game, Saksha had such a great game early on, is, is very impressive to me. So. Um, First Blood helped out a bit with that, but. Yeah. Uh -oh. He's only died once. Bit Speaking of, of dying, maybe Mad will go down. He's got Unstable Kakashi. He can't throw it. He's orchid it up. He's going to stun himself. Mad is going to go down. Haunt as well. They want to get involved with Draw. They have no detection, however. Ice Blast is going to sail through and not going to connect, so. Now, Hellraisers are starting to play a bit aggressively, and they're getting a couple of kills on the back end of it. And that's also your Blink Dagger coming out for your Earthshaker. At 25 minutes in, this isn't bad for Dubas. He's finally going to get involved here with some Echo Slams, hopefully. Yeah, he's still been involved with Fissures. He's had pretty good positioning, and he's gotten some nice Fissures off. They haven't always been enough to save people. And he's gotten caught a couple of times himself protecting his solos. But... I, I wouldn't say he wasn't involved at all. The H apparitional attacks haven't been doing too much though. Ooh, Orchid, Paris, Sashiko trying to get up to the high ground currently. He will make it away. Maybe. Uh... TP out from Dread. Alright. Okay. Good try from Hellraisers, but they can't get anything done off the back end of that gank. That could have been a lot though. Bad. Too hard to kill. They do have a hex on Invoker now. Yes, that is actually very nice. It's, I'm surprised he's gotten so much farm even without the, uh, the Midas, but then again, I guess it's not that big of a deal considering how often he's been involved in kills. He's got 174 last hits as well, which is pretty good for an invoker. I, I'm surprised he's the leading farmer, but actually maybe not so surprised uh, with his Fort Spirits now. Level, well, max level Exhort, obviously, level 4 Quas, and he's got his Point Wex as well, which gives him a bit more to work with. But with the Hex now, with the Necro now, he's got plenty of lockdown, he's got plenty of pushing potential. And uh, it really just comes down to what do they want to do here in the next couple minutes. I mean, there's a gem now up on the Alchemist as well, so they have map control going their way. So, Dread getting chased down. He's got a DD. Oh, he's got a DD. Strafe 
Couple of Serio hits, and he's done. Nicely done for Geral to pick up that hero. Unstable concoction on the back end. Yoki getting caught out. Mystic Flare Lasso. They bring him down. He's down for 56 seconds as well. And this could be prime time for either Roshan or heading to the high ground here. Even this early, you can do it. There's no buybacks on the map except for the Nature's Prophet, which actually, that, that's pretty big, but more importantly, yeah, Yoki's down for a while. Not having it is pretty huge. Yes. Top tower is under this is their time. That's your three push coming in now. And there is Glyph used, and this is going to be tough, I think, for Hellraisers. Ice Blast will be able to stop them for a moment, but they still have mech to go. And Ice Blast only connects on Geral, I believe. So now they're just going to head to the high ground. Blink Echo Slam coming in, but there's the mech immediately afterward. Dubas gets silenced up. There's the haunt coming through. Art Style working on QSDF Funzi. Sunstrike not going to connect. Art Style getting right click down. BKB's up for Geral. Deafening Blast. They grab the kill. They're going to get a double kill for Paris. Four dead, the last to live. That's going to be immune. He's going to make his way out of there with 50 HP. The Raxes are theirs for the taking. And Denial with a huge fight. Absolutely outstanding. And they're going to take the range racks first, melee racks second. Boom, Denial with an absolutely outstanding play. I don't think that uh, Denial even saw the Blink Heart Shaker. I think he stayed in fog after picking it up. And Funzi got the instant hex off oh, after the Echo Slam. He was able to kind of fissure into it. So that was an unimpressive initiation from Earth Shaker and an extremely impressive hex coming up from Funzi. That reaction time. That reaction time, in that though. Fight. Plus, DP was still dead. That, yeah, that's that's true as well. They couldn't get her in there and, and really just have the exorcism go and do all the work. And it just felt like a forced initiation, which I mean, you have to at that point in time. It, it, it's either lose a set of racks, you know, for nothing, or try to fight. And at the worst, well, you saw what happened. So, yeah. uh, Bloodstone is going to be the choice for the death prop for Yoki, though. But this is a choice I'm not sure about because this is an item you usually go for when you're getting kills and you're starting to get farm. You can build up those stacks on your your Bloodstone. But that doesn't seem to be the case this game, so... Yeah, you chose to get that over heart or get something like a casual plate mail or ghost after it's even not too bad this game. Bunzi? Um, you are dead, my friend. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, looks like he will go down. <laughs> getting close, though. Lasso in the back end. They're going to try to fight this immune getting caught out. Mystic Flare, not so much. And uh, two for one trade as across the map they got a kill on Dread through Clinks, and so Jarrell getting involved there. Uh, he actually has a chrysalis now too, so. Illusion. And Ward gets killed with, via the gem. Roshan might be the next target for denial, or they could just go to clean up the tier two bottom in a little bit. Yeah, it, it's really their choice at this point. I, I feel like if the problem is, is that bottom's not that push in, but I don't really think it's a problem. They have plenty of they have armor reduction from acid spray. They have plenty of right click from Geral. I think they can take this pretty quickly. Yeah, it's just gonna fall real fast. This is gonna be about a 10 second roach coming out here for denial, which means that an agent should be going for Geral. I think he has the spot for it. So, and now it's oh, very yeah. difficult for Heart Hellraisers to stay in this game. I think. Pkb durations for both Harris and Geral are still at nine seconds. So this next fight is gonna be extremely hard for Hellraisers. Well, I mean, <laughs> this is going to be the do or die situation whenever Denial just decide to push into the high ground here. Um, I think because they don't want to give Art Style too much more. I mean, he only has his vitality, which that was the thing that he picked up after the Radiance. So that that's something that they, you have to keep in mind. They really don't want him to be able to finish a heart before they get a second lane. Yeah. yeah, and he gets that heart, and all of a sudden he becomes not necessarily impossible to kill, but a lot more difficult. So. They're going to keep the pressure on. They're going to be able to push out top lane. The they've tier got, 2 is their bottom, and I think that's probably the next next yeah, objective. Yeah, they've got BOTs up on Evoker, so he's able to sit here and push out lanes. He's not too afraid of getting solo kill because their Furion on Hellraisers is under farm. At this point, he only has Blink Midas and Maelstrom. Uh, he did have to buy back in that fight mid, and he, it was a dieback, so that cost him a lot of money and mm -hmm. momentum in the game. Um, yeah, he just wanted to get the top lane out so they're not under third of split push and then they can group up and push bottom in. And he's actually running here to save his bot's cooldown. Which are only 50 seconds now. Well, that's actually, uh... <laughs> I mean, I guess it's better just to run the marathon than to have to use your bot's cooldown. You don't really need it, I guess. There's no there's no pressure. Like, no, there is that 5 minute Aegis though for Geral. He's actually going to grab his Daedalus before heading to that bottom lane. So now it's it's pretty much all in at this point. Not necessarily all in, but 
They certainly want to try to get another set of racks here. That's their main yeah, goal. They're definitely ahead at this point in the game. Yep, you look at the net worth chart, 12,000 for denial. And experience-wise, it's almost about 10,000 as well, so... Leading the net worth is going to be the Clinks here. Uh, Funzi behind just a bit. Uh, he's sitting at 15k. Dread is jungling the opposing team's jungle. He doesn't want to get quite out in his own jungle. Tier 2 tower is going to go down. and you, gotta, you have to have a great defense here. Blink Echo Slam is going to be huge coming out for Dubas. So we'll see how uh, they defend against this. If they spread out, if Denial can avoid all of that damage. Meanwhile, we going to use Strafe. Extra System is going to fly. Yule Scepter, that'll be up on uh, Jirali. He's going to get silenced as well. They're going to push it back. Ice Blast Haunt. They're using all these abilities. BKB for Paris. Unstable Concoction. Art Sal Reality's in. He's going to get silenced. Mystic Flare blown up as well. He's down for 66 seconds, but he does buy back. Yoki, he's hexed up as well. Fisher blocks, but does not keep him out. He will stay alive. His exorcism is going to be over in just a bit. And and not much was used there for denial at all. Um, so Haunt's down. Exorcism is going to be down. The only thing they did use is ex or Echo Slam. And now it's just time to go high ground here for denial, I think. Yeah, but another Yule's. Oh, Clinks is stuck. Ooh, nice four yeah, staff. Up by the sprout. And yeah, yeah, four staff too. Oh no, Creo! He's gonna go down. It looks like these ice blasts have been brutal for uh, denial. Oh my God, he survived. One tick away. Unstable connecting. Deafening blast only hitting on immune. Blink last one. Dubas. Force not available for three seconds, but here we go. Silence going in, but Jarrell right clicking down. Dubas, he is going to go down to the Orchid, it looks like. Now Art Style getting focused. Concussive shot. Sun Strike. Boom. Double kill, though. It's Jarrell getting it done. Age is coming up. Unstable out of the high ground. Dread getting brought low, but Jarrell's chasing after other heroes. Dread trying to CP up, but there's the cold sap going in. Dread's going to try to sprout, but not going to do anything. Three dead on Hellraisers. They lose two for denial, but they're made heroes. They're cores. They're takey bad boys. And they're going to be looking to get to the high ground here as Yoki now. Uh oh, look at buddy. Ice Blast. Misses on everybody. Here we go. High ground again. And Matt actually has his mech up in four, so... Funzi's regenning up. Second set of racks coming in here in just a second. Dead for 46 seconds is going to be the Spectre. And this should be a second set of racks. In fact, it is. And Denial just gets run away. <laughs> That's just... They're done. That's it. <laughs> so now, Hellraisers are down there, too. But Aegis being only 5 minutes, you want to use that in the first fight you take once you have it. Yeah. That was it's... really well played, actually. Yeah, they got their objective, they only lost a couple of heroes in their Skywrath and Bat. Really oh. good fight coming out from Denial. Absolutely. They're looking impressive right now. I mean, you're taking a set of racks here. You're in a position where now with two sets of racks down, you're really choking out this Spectre. They're trying to fight in some of the most kind of awkward places in, in just their initiation. They're using all of their abilities before you even get to the high ground or as you get to the high ground. And all of a sudden, you just wait those abilities out and you continue to pressure the high ground and get kills on the back end of it. And a fight that definitely looked like it could have gone Hellraiser's way with maybe better initiation goes to Denial's way and turns into a set of racks. Now with one set of racks remaining, if they get those Mega Creeps, I think the game at that point is essentially over. And even right now, it's still very difficult. You're going to start out, starve out Art Style, who is still behind. You talked about it also. This was the most important thing, or one of the most important things, is that he doesn't get that second, uh, or doesn't get that heart by the time that second set of racks is down. So Denial accomplished their goal in that regard. Heart Spectre does so much more damage to your entire team with dispersion and keeping the Radiance burn on you. So I'm not having that, just it makes it a lot easier for them. Plus they have long duration BKBs, it's still 8 seconds on their two heroes. Mm -hmm. And they might even be going for BKB as the next item on Evoker, who is currently saving for buyback since he can die, buyback, and bots right back into the fight. And they're not letting their foot off the gas, they're going straight for the kill, they're going for the top lane and mega creeps right now. Now this could be it for the first game for Hellraisers. Denial playing such a solid game of Dota. And uh, they'll keep the pressure on, as you mentioned. We'll see how this turns out in just a minute.
God, I mean, this has just been, it's been fun to watch, man. fonzie has been hitting his sun strikes, and although Hellraisers have been really done much, they've made this game pretty close, and a lot of these fights are close anyways. Big yeah, Gecko coming in, but only really on Jarrell. They will mech up Jarrell. He's getting low haunt, and look at all the fight, the chaos, breaking up, but Art Style getting right click down. Jarrell gets the kill, lasso on a mute. Meanwhile, Yoki is hexed up. funzie has got to make his way out of there. Ghost Walk gonna keep him away from those exorcism spirits, but they will grab a double kill for Dread. Skyroth goes down. Paris does as well. Good defense they get all their abilities off and that's what they needed to do at the fight at the tier three in the mid lane and the tier three in the bottom lane as well but they do start doing it now art cell just got like four or five shot by clanks that's unfortunate actually ridiculous. Well, it's unfortunate because i wanted to see if if he would have gotten a ton of gold from that i mean he is up to 2.3k the team fight recap didn't show up for me so i can't really see it unfortunately that's, an, that's, that's sad. Meanwhile, TPing down to the bottom lane. Dread, he actually TPed away as the Sun Strike came in. So, nice split pushing coming out. But I think at this point, if you're Denial, you, you probably have to get another Roshan. But it's still pretty far away at this point. Because if another fight like that happens and you have an Aegis, then all of a sudden that can be avoided. You know, yeah. losing a couple of those heroes. They jumped straight in onto Draw, but Draw with a creep buff was too tanky from the takedown. He was able to get his BKB off in time. Mm -hmm. And he, he just laid into Arch Style, essentially. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he blew him up. Yeah. I mean, with the Daedalus, he has a Helm of the Dom now, too, uh, which will probably will lead into his Satanic at some point in the future. And he's already pretty tanky with Death Pack at level 3. Especially when that's up. When it's not up, maybe not so much, but still. It's going to be very difficult to kill him if he picks up a Satanic at some point in time. Which he, he can get next if he wants to. I'm not sure if he will, but it's a good item. Satanic is always a good item against Spectre. Just because you're taking so much damage over time. And not even just the use of just having that when you're hitting for so much as it clinks with your ultimate and searing arrows damage. You life steal, and you just stay... I, strong enough HP to keep in the fight as long as you're not affected by the AA blast well looks like the push is coming they're going into the mid lane instead of the top lane blank blast so if they can catch out Yoki that'll be huge yeah he does have buyback so he, he also has a blood soon he's only down for 30 seconds Ice Blast goes, Creo. now the Haunt coming in as well, they're gonna try to fight this yet again, it looks like, or at least get the kill on Creo. They wanna kill these illusions quickly, but no, Art Style does get that kill, but Haunt is now down, so that's the thing, that's the trade-off there, as you Haunt, yes, you get the Skyrath, but, uh, I don't that know if it's really worth it. Another really good play from Clumsy there, as soon as he saw the Haunt, it was an instant hex onto the image that spawned onto Creo. Creo unfortunately ran back into the other images, but <laughs> he instantly hexed that one to try and save Creo's life. The reactions coming out of Funzy this game are amazing and ridiculous and quick. This is the type of, of playstyle that I've been waiting to see from uh, this team since the whole MTW team from back in 2012 when they played at TI2. It just feels like they're playing that way again. Just really solid Dota, but aggressive. You know, they know what they need to get done. Uh, Funzi is just doing everything ridiculously well in this game. Sakshika has had a fantastic impact, and, and obviously... Matt has just been kind of the leader in terms of what's going on across the map. And and, and Jarrah has been very impressive as well, honestly. He's just been doing some work this, here on this clink, so... His decision-making influence is pretty good. Except for the one time where he died, he just did not man up at all. And he just died doing nothing pretty much. Oh, Blasto coming in. That'll be on Dread, but the Dual Scepter coming through. Fisher coming out. Sakshi is trying to do it on his own. And uh, the Exorcism is going to get popped now. Funzy pops the BKB. Art Style chasing after him. He's going to try to TP out. This is not the fight they want to take. Funzy makes it out miraculously, though. Somehow, Smoke, uh, Mad doesn't get caught with that. Creo now trying to get out. Silence is going to go through. They'll split up. They want to try to avoid as many depths as possible here. And still chasing. Creo is going to fall. It looks like Mad will get out just fine. Draw getting away. He did get the Aegis, mind you. And he got a kill with the Soul Burn on Dubas as well, which I didn't see, but... Yoki's got a blink dagger on Death Prophet. Uh, that's not the first time I've seen that, but... It's a, yeah, it's a really interesting pickup, though. Yeah. It's something you, uh, that's not the norm. No, oh, definitely He's working not. on a Sheepus next. Potentially AC. Finally, the heart is done, though. And, and I, I was talking about this Bloodstone. It looks like I was wrong. He got 10k, or 10 charges, rather, uh, on the Bloodstone. 
But meanwhile, Denial are still ahead 1,500 in terms of the net worth. They were up 20k before that fight. Uh, but then that fight broke out, and uh, steadily it's been dropping here and there. And uh, experience-wise, it's it's still pretty close. 6,000 for Denial, but that's that's not that bad. So now with the heart done, this gets very difficult for Denial, I think, to stop when there's a haunt up. But, well, Heart Style is getting orchided. Daedalus procs. Sunstrike. Not enough to kill him, but they dish out as much damage as possible. That's with one hero and a Sunstrike alone. So really well played. And Denial is going for the throat once again. Yeah. And uh, also, Matt has a heavy Halberd too, so something to keep in mind. Throw that on the uh, Spectre. Throw that on, obviously, uh, the Nature's Gear Prophet. Yep. Yeah, that's it. And, Even the uh, Earth Shaker. You know, that 400% damage from Enchant Totem, it's like a yeah. 500 damage swing. Enchant Totem, pretty good ability in that regard. Fisher coming out. They blow up the Creep Wave, but already the Tier 3 tower pretty low. Just a couple more Searing Arrow procs. Denial isn't bull rushing the base this time, like last time. They went with the first wave that they had, and they just they went for it. This time, they're letting Creeps push in on middle. They're letting Creeps push in on bottom. Just so there's pressure on the, the little buildings in the base, and also the <laughs> Tier 4 towers at the same time as they're going into the rack's top. They know they have there's, this two racks advantage. There's there's yeah, no reason to push the aggression. Advantage. Yeah, exactly. Just just kind of take it slow and see what the thing you get done with it. So, um, next, I haven't checked items in a while. I do want to see who has what at this point. Uh, there is that Ghost Scepter now from Immune. Blink Dagger we talked about for Dubas. He also has the Four Staff. Dread now is up to a Mjolnir uh, Scythe and a Blink of his own, so he's starting to get farmed. And we've really been checking yeah. the Spectre's items a lot too, but we see in that the last... he's the heart. 12 minutes or so, Dread finished being on there and he got a hex, so he picked up his farm a bit. Lasso, that'll be on Art Style. Silenced up, Mystic Flare, he gets blown up and he doesn't have buyback. He's down for 73 seconds. And uh, big pickup there, but what can they get done with it? Also, the Exorcism did go. Now, keep in mind, you do have Echo Slam still for the Earth Shaker. That could be a big, uh, big initiation tool here coming up from Hellraiser, so we'll see how it turns out. Glyph is popped, and Satanic is finished now, so. And Jeral is very tanky, even without Death Pact, so... Denial's playing really cautious because Spectre still has Haunt up, they don't know if he's by back or not. They don't want to get caught by a surprise. Age is still up on Jeral, he did get hexed up, now he's still going to town. Meanwhile, Echo Slam coming in, Jeral getting low, Matt's up though, staying alive! Dread pops the Mjolnir, but Dread is getting blown up by Jeral. And there's going to be the Crypt Swarm going to work. Draw still again with that Aegis up in the air in the Yule Scepter. They do take the melee racks. Fisher's going to go. That's the Aegis done. And that should be it, I think, for the most part. Unstable's going to fly on Yoki. Last set of racks is going to fall. And uh, this game is pretty much all but over for Denial. They've, they've taken a really fantastic game. They're now going to the Tier 4 Towers. They have a couple of buybacks, but uh, they don't have the Furion. So unfortunately, he'll be down for another 50 seconds. Lasso going through, that'll be on Dubaz. Yoki was hexed up as well. Mystic Flare not really connecting, not that it matters. They get yet another kill, and that'll be on Dubaz. Haunt coming in, there's the reality. Trio! He's gonna fall just barely now. Nag getting low, but here's gonna be the Orchid coming in. Funzi doing some work there. Up in the air is Jeral. BKB is popped. Hardstyle getting blown up. Boom, Jeral gets another one. Monster kill streak for him. And they're doing some work. Immune is going to pop the Ghost Scepter. GG finally called. And game number one will go the way of Denial in an absolutely fantastically played game from them. Yeah, they came in with a game plan. They played, it, it looks like they practice lineups extremely similar, if not the exact same thing as this one. And they knew their timings when they needed to get stuff done, and they just, they did it. They took the objectives and killed the throne. They hit the buildings. They hit the buildings. And that's all you gotta do. They also hit the heroes. That's they hit true. everything. That's true. They, <laughs> they hit there's a fire sale. Hit everything. Everything must. <laughs>